And joining us now is investigative archaeologist, author, explorer, modern day Indiana Jones, uh, Rabbi Harry Moskoff, one who wears a lot of hats. Today you're not wearing your explorer hat, but you're wearing your very special kippah. True. <laughs> good to be here. So uh, anyway, it's really good to see you. We met a few years ago, and I That's know right. you've been a you've been a very busy guy. But tell us, sure. kind of, I know you 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 know the Ark Report is your book. It's still doing very well on Amazon. You've done you know films around it. Yes. What is it you could tell us from from your journey? Um, where do we really think the Ark of the Covenant is? Oh. Well, quite a loaded question, but very important. We're getting closer every day. Actually, here it is, the, the Ark Report. It is right here. The so, Ark of the Covenant's right here yeah, in this book. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see where it is. And uh, actually, I'm working on the second book. It should be out hopefully in a couple of months. But a lot of new evidence has come out. Uh, actually, going back to Dr. Charles Warren, uh -huh. so he actually surveyed, he was the last one to survey the Temple Mount, mm -hmm. uh, just directly in answer to your question. It's really below the Temple Mount, according to this theory, uh, not directly below the Dome of the Rock, but a little bit further to the southwest. And now we have a whole bunch of rabbis, chief rabbis, etc., that are on side with this theory. And uh, Dr. Charles Warren, and uh, Captain Charles Warren yeah. actually in his survey wrote that, uh, and I just discovered this like two months ago, I was so excited. He says, this is probably, I suggest this is probably with the location of the sacrificial altar. Wow. And he says where it is. And according to my book, uh, excuse me, and my survey, uh, that's exactly where I put the altar, which means the Kodesh Kodoshim, the Holy of Holies, is in a, about uh, 10 meters, 20 meters or so away from that to the west. So we have a, a, a pretty much exact location, about uh, four floors down from there, southwest of the Dome of the Rock. Wow. So uh, we found some really amazing things lately. Uh, a couple of months ago, actually also a year ago, they were doing renovations to the Dome of the Rock. But beneath the Dome of the Rock in this cave, uh, when they lifted up the carpet, they actually saw there's two uh, tunnels, really, entrances to tunnels that go down. According to Charles Warren, I believe it's an extension of tunnels number one and three. So that actually could lead, those tunnels actually could lead to the chamber where the ark is being wow. kept, which is incredible. So uh, what do we believe as to who, so who built the tunnels and, and when? I mean, were the tunnels in there when the temple was built, or was this kind of in the, you know, the later years during, you know, when, you know, all of these right. terrible things were happening, the Romans were, were doing a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that definitely happened. <laughs> but uh, there are actually 50 known tunnels, believe it or not, 5-0, uh, 50 known tunnels underneath the Temple Mount. And uh, some of those tunnels, each one of them, almost all of them have a, a number to them. This is number one, number three. But they were built actually by King Solomon, some of them. Uh, certainly, like Maimonides says, that uh, these tunnels, where the Ark is anyway, uh, there's a whole labyrinth, a whole warren of, of tunnels under there. And uh, so he was actually one of the people that actually purposely built a tunnel uh, to hide uh, what I call off-site, so to put the right. Ark off-site. Yeah, off so do you think, did he, did he hide it? right away there or did he build the tunnels like do we believe because he was prophesizing and anticipating the temple would be destroyed like were they right were they kind of built into the original construction or once things started getting bad they realized we better find a little it was build both actually a combination yeah yeah uh in the mean like when he started building the first temple mm -hmm. he did put those tunnels there just in case he actually knew uh he had that that prophecy uh, that yes, that that's going to happen. That you know, eventually the first temple will be destroyed, Saul, Solomon's temple. So we need a place to keep the ark that's still there because of the second temple, the ark did, wasn't there at all. It was just sort of what I call off-site. It was down below, but it still had an effect of bringing the kedusha, bringing the holiness, right. the divine presence to the temple right. mount. And it's funny because the way you see you know the ark depicted in 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 movies, you know, we think it's this big vast thing, but it's really like just from stuff that I've read, it's really not that big, right? Like, what do they think of the size? <laughs> Like, it's smaller than this table, right? Well, it's about the size, uh, yeah, a little bit smaller than this table, right? Very good. Uh, and the staves go out beyond the table. But it is pure gold, and it has the, the Ten Commandments, which are sapphire. Very heavy, in other words. So, uh, but it levitated. I did I did something a couple weeks ago, a video called Secrets of the Lost Ark. And over there, uh, we, t we talked about this, you know, the capability of levitating. I mean, you can't really hold it, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It was miraculous. Mm -hmm. It was uh, an incredible object that really, it's sort of like a magnet it for the divine right, present, right which right, it still right. is and how is this applying to what your recent what your recent work is oh amazing amazing so you know one of the things i do is track 
uh, where the temple vessels ended up, including, of course, the Ark of the Covenant. So when you do that, it provides clues to where the Ark really is today. So what we found is some amazing places uh, where, you know, you have places, let's say, like the Vatican, where, you know, once the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 AD, so they brought all the vessels over to the Vatican. So people say, yeah, you know, the menorah's in there, but no, there are two things in the Vatican. One is the uh, golden, uh, I guess you would call it, it's called a tzitz in Hebrew. It's sort of like a head plate, golden that the high priest the wears. The high priest, like, okay. Right, and the other thing is the curtain, the large curtain that was there. Also uh, amazing, with the rip in it from Titus, from Titus, mm -hmm. the uh, Roman general, still there after 2,000 years. Those two things are in the Vatican. The rest of the uh, temple, Caleb, the vessels, moved away uh, about 400 years later. The Visigoths, the Vandals actually uh, sacked Rome, and went to Carthage, and I have this all documented, uh, historians. From Carthage, it went to Constantinople, which is uh, modern-day Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And then Justinian sent it back to Jerusalem, a place called the Nehemiah Church, which is still there today. Uh, it's about 1,400 years ago, I guess, uh, when, they, when they did that. And uh, there, are, there are theories that say that the Caleb, the vessels are still underneath that church. Thank you, know? you Rabbi Harry. Yeah, you're amazing, welcome. Great amazing to be here. work.